I love going to garage sales. You can find a lot of interesting things there. People accumulate so much junk. It's fascinating what kind of stuff you can find sometimes. For example, the last time, an antique box caught my eye. It played such a lovely tune. I immediately decided to buy it. I asked the salesman, how much is this beauty? The seller gave me a strange look, as if I was the first person to ask. It is very expensive, but I'll give it to you for 10 bucks. The box looked expensive. The carvings, mahogany, a porcelain figure of the ballerina twirling to Walt's music. So I decided to make sure I didn't mishear it. Just 10 bucks? Yes, only 10. Sounds like a bargain. When I took the box in my hands, the salesman kept looking strangely at me, like he was very relieved to be getting rid of it. Just be careful with it, he warned me, and then walked away to another customer. I didn't pay much attention to his words at the time. Hi, my name is Kim, and I bought a jewelry box at a garage sale. Surely, you know the ancient legends about genies, but only in fairy tales do they grant your wishes. That doesn't happen in reality. The box I bought at first seemed perfectly ordinary, even though it was very beautiful. I put it on my dressing table. I only opened it occasionally to listen to the melody, but each time, I was overwhelmed by a strange feeling, which is very difficult to describe. It was as if the whole world was in my hands. It was as if I could have anything I wanted, and then I would close the box and the feeling would disappear. I found out about the secret properties of the box by chance. I was as usual lying on my bed, scrolling through Instagram, thinking of nothing. But there was a low whisper. I looked around the room, but there was no one there. I took the box and out of it came the beautiful melody again. I placed my purchase on the bed and laid down beside it, continuing to browse through Mike's account. I casually said out loud, I wish he'd text me, and almost at the same second, I got a message. The music in the box fell silent. The ballerina stopped dancing and froze. I felt a little uneasy. Did I do this? I said out loud, but there was no answer. Mike asked me, how's it going? He has never texted me, much less taken an interest in my affairs, only in my fantasies. I replied, good. And you? Great. Okay, I'll text you later. I couldn't believe that I was actually texting with Mike. I took the box and tried to start it up again, but it didn't work. I closed it and opened it again, but nothing happened. Was it broken? I guess that's why it cost 10 bucks. I put the trinket on the table and waited for another message from Mike, but he never texted again. It was like he had forgotten or he just didn't want to. The next day at school, I tried with all my might to get his attention, but he didn't do anything. Everything was back to normal again. At family dinner, I looked sad and couldn't hear what my parents were saying. Mom asked, did something happen at school? As if there were no other problems, just school and lessons, and the fact that my heart was hurting didn't bother her. No, I'm fine. I answered and we continued eating. When I went up to my room, I collapsed on my bed and let out a heavy, desperate sigh. Why is it always like this? Then I heard the whispering again. The sound was coming from the vanity table. I knew it was the jewelry box. I had to admit, it scared the hell out of me. I opened it. The music played again, and the ballerina started dancing. I thought you were broken. There was one thing I was terribly anxious to try, even though I doubted it would work. You don't grant wishes, do you? I asked the box. It was silent as it continued to fill the room with its lovely melody. I was filled with a sense of limitless possibilities again. Well, I decided. Let's try it. I should wish for something simple. Make a chocolate bar appear in my hands. The music in the box stopped, as it did yesterday. I waited for a chocolate bar to magically materialize out of thin air and fall into my hands, but it didn't. Okay, I'm not crazy. Then, my mother knocked on the door. She opened the door and said, I brought something to cheer you up. In her hand, she had the chocolate bar I was just thinking about. Oh, thank you. Don't worry too much, you'll be fine. Mom left the room, and I was left in a frightening silence. I must be crazy after all. It can't be true, can it? I kept turning the box in my hands, 
this way and that way, but I didn't find anything unusual, except that there was an engraving on the side of the lid. There was something written on it, but it was so small that I couldn't read it. I found a magnifying glass and held it up to the inscription. It was a language I didn't know. I rewrote the sentence, and I typed the words into Google. It turned out to be Latin. The phrase translated like this. One day, one wish. I wished it wasn't someone's cruel joke. At least now, I understand how you work. At that moment, the box seemed alive to me, as if it understood everything and heard me. I couldn't calm down for the rest of the day. I nervously walked around the room and thought more than I'd ever thought before. Why did I get it in the first place? Who had made it? What more could I wish for? What shouldn't I wish for? What would you wish for if you were me? World peace, clean environment, no terminal illnesses, an endless slice of pizza? Don't forget that you're in high school, and I doubt you're thinking about anything that doesn't concern you personally. The whole world is wrapped up in your seemingly complex, incredibly spirited personality. And of course, I was thinking about myself and my feelings for Mike, and the expensive jewelry, car… I had a huge complex that almost everyone had their own car, but I didn't. I had to take the school bus. It seemed to me then that I had an endless number of wishes. I mean, how many days are there in a year? 365 and sometimes 366. I could have anything I ever dreamed of. And I'll start with Chloe. Chloe is the type of girl you see in every school. They suffer from a god complex, despising anyone who doesn't look like a top model. I hated her, and so did a lot of people. But apart from antipathy, she also caused a sense of fear in those who got in her way. I don't remember a single person saying anything to her face, especially since she was dating Kevin, the captain of the high school soccer team. Huge guy. I had to teach her a lesson to all those who have been hurt by her. But before I did, I wanted to tell Samantha, my best friend. This secret was tearing me up inside. It was almost unbearable to live with it alone. Of course, she didn't believe me when I first told her, and who in their right mind would? But I decided to demonstrate how the box worked, so I went to school with it. When the bell rang for recess, Samantha and I went to the cafeteria where we saw Chloe. She was sitting at the table with Kevin and berating him for spending too much time at practice. Baby, I'm a soccer player. God, they're a perfect couple, Samantha said, not really believing that a miracle was about to happen. We stayed away from everyone else so we wouldn't be seen. I pulled out the box. What happens now? Samantha asked. Look, I said, and I opened my artifact. The music started playing, and I said, I want Kevin to pour a glass of soda in Chloe's face. At the same moment, Kevin... Under the influence of mysterious powers, took the glass of soda from the table, seemed to think for a split second about what he was about to do, but unable to resist the sudden urge, he poured the entire thing in Chloe's face. She screamed so loudly, everyone went silent and turned in their direction. Kevin, what the hell? I'm sorry, baby. I don't understand what happened. But Chloe had already picked up her glass and did the same thing to him. Samantha and I were laughing our heads off. I can't believe what I just saw, she said and looked at the box. May I? No, it only works once a day. Wow, was all my friend could say. We agreed that we would take turns using the box. We made a vow that we would never use it against each other. We mostly used the magic of the box for little things. For instance, we needed to do well on a test or an essay. Samantha made her brothers run errands with it, like cleaning her room or picking up some treats in the evening when she was particularly hungry for something. All I wanted was to make Mike fall in love with me. But I had my doubts, so I asked Samantha once, Look, do you think it's ethical to use the box to make someone fall in love with you? She thought about it and replied, If someone is handsome, it's not ethical, and who is your chosen one? I never told her I was secretly in love with Mike. Yeah, don't worry. I answered and changed the subject. I decided that I was going to get his heart in a roundabout way. Like, I changed my appearance a little. I got rid of my pimples. My parents thought it was age-related. Also, with the help of the box, I made my hair look like it came off the cover of a fashion magazine. Anything else would have been too noticeable. But even after that, Mike wasn't paying attention to me. So even though Samantha and I had agreed that we would keep it ethical, 
I took the box and wished that Mike would ask me out on a date, and so he did. But things turned out differently than I had imagined. First, it turned out that both Samantha and I were both in love with Mike. Secondly, we both forgot about the ethics. Third, we had dates on the same day, at the same time, at the same cafe. It's hard to believe such a coincidence, but with the kind of power we have, anything could happen. Once you start making wishes, the universe starts to malfunction a bit. When we both got to the cafe, Mike wasn't there. We didn't have to say a word. It's all your fault, I told Samantha. Me? If you told me you loved Mike, this wouldn't have happened. I hope he wasn't torn apart. Didn't we talk about ethics? Give me the box. I moved towards Samantha. No, you don't know how to use it. I tried to wrestle the box out of my friend's hands. We struggled. And at one point, my artifact flew up and fell on the tile falling apart. Thus came the end of our supernatural powers. All attempts to put it back together ended in failure. And Mike, for some unknown reason, avoided both of us. Okay, I said to Samantha, at least I don't have pimples anymore, and I don't have that weird ward on my neck. We both laughed. A brief disagreement couldn't ruin our long friendship, not even if there was a magical artifact involved. And what would you wish for if you had a similar magic box? Write your answers in the comments, like the video, and share it with your friends. And share it with your friends.